Welcome back everyone. If you're new here, please check out the timestamps. In today's video, we're going to be checking out our Jeep Comanche MJ Enduro Hardbody on top of our TRX4 Sport. This is our first uh, maiden voyage out with the truck. We brought it down to the Thunder Road. Um, got to try it out with a bunch of other people, some people from Tiny Bastards Group, Tiny Tire Bastards Group and whatnot. They run some gates and stuff. I'm not sure all it's going to make it in there, but it should be some good footage. We're also going to show you how to mount the body using magnets and to the frame and get that nice low fit and some of the other mounting options that are there per magnet and battery mounting options and battery size options. All right, if you like the show and you don't want to miss out on anything, make sure to subscribe as we're a small channel and you might not pop up on your feed again. If you want to help support the channel as well, please like it, comment back and forth to help me understand things. I'd always appreciate it. Thank you guys. Okay, this is a short little bit to show you guys how I mounted and some options on how you have to mount your Jeep Comanche MJ through Enduro hard bodies. All right. <clears throat> So this is a TRX4 Sport, just to clarify and make sure that everyone is aware that is what we're mounting to. So if you don't have the same truck, it may not work for you. Just keep that in mind. Um, I did use the stock TRX4 Sport narrow wheel wells. Now these are the specific narrow ones. So I don't know what the wide ones look like or whatever, but these are what are labeled as narrow. I also trimmed them. There's a bubble right here. Boop, boop, boop. Bubble. You see this bubble right there? There would be another one right here. I cut directly after the bubble at a diagonal shape, in which you can see, follow the curve down and left about a quarter of an inch little overhang there. Kind of sanded that. Did the, I did some massaging with the sandpapers on that. And you do that because on here we have indents from our lights so there you go and you could probably get a little bit different cut on there you could do extra fine and get it in there I'll show you guys when you put the body on um by the way it's all magnets that i did obviously you can see now but uh do do, do you can see our so I tap the camera i want to make sure yep you can see the lights here so it just would not work it wouldn't curve in there so just know that that's what that's for also another reason why i use the wheel wells as you heard is that's where I put my magnets. So putting them to my wheel wells there really allowed a nice surf, stable surface. And I put them here because it was the lowest part of the wheel well in between. I tried this spot and I tried this spot. I've had other bodies mounted in the center here, but in the center it allowed the body to flop to the side. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, but that we just say it allowed the body to flop to the side a little bit more. When I tried these two spots, what was happening is the glue had to sit on my interior, my Lexan interior, because this one we're just doing Lexan interior. We might do hard body later, but so that was the problem with that. Otherwise, this would have worked too. If you're not doing Lexan, you can probably use these two if you'd rather. Um, but also then you're not allowing yourself to really have them to be taken on and off for your light crawlers so or your rock lights. Um, so I did find this to be the best spot and then that allowed the magnets to also go up on the inside of the body quite a ways. So you can see here. So what's that helpful for is because with your magnet mounting, from what I understand with engineering in general, I mean, if this is your hold points, you're going to want your hold points as far out and as far as part as possible into the corners of what you're trying to hold down together. So these are really wide out, really far apart from the back and this, each other. So these are excellent hold points in my mind. I, I, I just love they were, I had to fill in, you know, I didn't have to, but I do fill in with uh, extra glue a little bit. And the way that I do this is so I put glue on my fenders and then I put glue with both magnets together. I put glue in the fenders, not on the magnets. And then I put glue on the top of the magnet that is going to go to my body and then I push or I set the two double stack of magnet on my fender and then I line my body up very quickly and apply pressure down from the top of the body evenly to the bottom of the truck's frame. And then what that'll do, you don't wanna take it off, leave it there for about an hour, the longer the better. Um, and then what that'll do is the glue that was on top will now hold the magnets to the top of the truck and the glue that's on the bottoms will hold the, the other magnets to the to the fenders 
And just to make sure, um, you can just peel gently from the back first or something like that. But if it doesn't work, you just re-glue until you get a good hold. Once you get a good hold, I would go around the outside and kind of glue again just to make sure you have that extra good hold. Unless, you, unless you're positive, like here's a good example of that, just to get that good hold. Okay, so in the back you hear some magnets flopping around and stuff. And that's because the way that we did this is we mounted two magnets to the back here. And what that did is they're just glued to the body and they magnetize straight to the frame itself. I want to make sure you guys got a good view of that. So they magnetize straight to the frame as far back again on the frame as I could get. So they go all the way back there. And what that does is just a really, really, really nice fit. This is, I mean, I couldn't really ask for a better fit. It goes all the way down the line. Now this gap here is not because the body's not even, it's because the this these are not even. These sit crooked, not the body. So just just know that like the body is sitting even, but the the stock Traxxas whatever have like a, a, a lean into them. Either that or I'm crazy because the body's sitting even. <laughs> No, I'm probably crazy. Um, anyways, with magnets or with with um, batteries, with this body, to have a battery in it at all down the center, you cannot use the original Traxxas uh, large battery mount. It will hit the bottom of the bed, so you either have to cut, cut out the bed and cut out the back window area and stuff, or you take that out and you could use... Um, a small battery mount up front if you're using these these uh, what's it called here the front fenders also come with a pad where you can mount a small front crawler battery I don't have that pad on hand I don't use it because I'm not using the battery so I just take it out for weight reduction but there is that so you could do that um, we bought a LCG low center gravity um, mounting system through Etsy this was like 20 bucks I don't remember the guy's name I did it there's a video on it as well um, but it seemed pretty worth it. I mean, it's 3D printed, so it's crap. Even though they all say, oh, it's gonna be great. It's crap, but it is great. At the same time, if you don't know what I mean, then uh, you'll figure it out, because welcome to hobbying. Some things are crap, even though they're great. Uh, that being said, when you go to mount a large battery, the top of your battery is still gonna hit the bottom of the truck bed. No, it's just too long. About here is about the maximum range. So even if you get the LCG, you're still gonna want a shorter battery. If you're using a large battery like me, what we did, because I forgot about this, is I emergency mounted to sideways like that. And even with just double magnets, it still allowed my body to go all the way down. Sorry, that's hanging out. That won't be there, obviously, because, but, uh, it's still allowed for permanent mountage. You can see, I can pull all the way up, all corners. Oh, I got that thing in between now, but got back here, back here, here we go. You know, and then you pull up in two opposite corners to pull it off. Very nice. Uh, you can watch the video too. We'll have some runtime. Uh, the whole time we drove this, we drove this truck for about five hours and the mounting system um, falling over. We only had one fall off a high thing, which the body fell off and then magnetized right back onto it. Um, but it never actually came like apart and split apart and stayed apart. Uh, the new way that we're mounting is we're still waiting on our new magnets come in, but we got some cheap fr fridge ones. We're gonna add one disc magnet to the back. So now we have three mounting magnets in the back in a stack, okay? And that just lifts it just a tiny bit more and makes this gap a little bit more even as well. And what that does is it allows me to mount my battery sideways like this now. So I was gonna do it like that, but if I mount it like this, it allows me to go between the back of the chairs and in between and up uh, between the back window and goes up in there a little bit snugger. So, ah, of course it's not gonna do it right off of when you're in the video. But there we go, I think it's on there. Yeah, it's about in there. There we go. But yeah, this one I haven't done much testing with, but you get a much better fit as far as weight distribution, I feel like. With it laying on its side, it's a bit more diagonal from front to back as well. With it's vertically on its side, which what we'll call this version, it's 
just affecting your weight a little bit. You can see how it's leaned in the air. So it's not great. And you would just use a strap, a Velcro strap to keep this down. Honestly, the body will keep it down. You, it's not gonna ever fall out unless the body falls off. But uh, I did have to trim this post here to make this possible. Um, it's not perfect. Really, you need a smaller mag uh, battery. This battery is just so big. The other thing I was gonna do is you could um, mount the truck, cut a hole through the bed, mount the, the battery to the bed, run the cord through the bottom of the bed, and then cover this with like, just whatever, you know, make something, make it out of cardboard, spray paint it, and make it look like a box. So now you just have a, a box in the back of your truck, but that's actually your battery. So you could do something like that to get your stuff to fit lower. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. I think that's all I have for you guys on that. And I hope that helps, because uh, I know it can be tough out there trying to get it down. So thank you guys for uh, watching the video and trusting me to give you some info. I hope it helps. Um, if I get new updated stuff, you know I'm going to share that too. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. I always try to get back on the comments as fast as possible. I enjoy just everything about that has to do with the hobby, from building and then driving to making videos and sharing them to just talking to people and in time if i mean if i see you out there i'm going to share you all this same information with you i'm not going to say like go to the youtube and watch it you know unless we're busy or something but it's like i'll always take the time be it a kid or adult or anything so all right guys thanks again way around okay we already came down that sadly <laughs> well that's starting off well all right, first real test. This is the first time I even got to drive this truck. Gosh. Oh my gosh, it made it. That too. I've never seen it with the is that a separate hard body tent no, or, or Lexon? Okay. Okay. There's out of the box, it's one of the best. And, and okay. You no, know, it really doesn't. That's super really cool. Alright, I'm gonna follow you up this crazy line here. Once I get turned around. Yeah, I, I went to a hardware store and I found a little, a uh, couple little things. So I was able to make like a uh, soft shackles and and uh, what is that? I always call it. Um, you can run your winch line through a loop, so to grab another point. I don't know, I just seen it on Mass Off Road Recovery. Yeah. I was like, I'm making one of them. <laughs> I know. How do you get that roof rack like that? I got that one from. Uh, yeah, okay. I gotta get the TF2 out of it. I gotta wear it? Okay. I'll send you a little. You don't get yeah. as many because it's not metal. You don't get the scale. I don't want metal. the metal. Well, you get one. You get more points for metal. Yeah, you get two points for metal, one for plastic, which is like, it's one backup. That's. I'm good with that. You also, you can just do just lights and get one point. So, I thought about throwing my SCX 24 lights up there to see if that counted us. I was like, technically lights. Alright. Here we go. That was nice.
I got so many. My tire can't even. Ah, there we go. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah! Heck yeah! I will say I watched you for about five minutes. I had a really good idea. I did that a couple weeks ago on the point crawl. I watched everyone, and then when I did mine, I was like, I'm doing really good. And I thought about it, I'm like, well, I did just watch about 20 minutes of, of people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Man, I, these tires are right. They, I dug so many holes. <laughs> Holy smokes, these are diggers. Oh my goodness. Threw my bike over, it looks like. I didn't even notice. I tried to do nothing, nothing's glued down. So you can take everything off and like, like the bucket's held down by a magnet and stuff like that. So where are you going over here? I gotta see if you can make it. Have you tried right, right in here? So, whoa. All right. So you want to hit this tire. That tire wants to be right about here when you get up there. There you go. Pretty good. Pop. Oh. Don't start popping it a bit. Carefully, but yeah. There you go, yeah. Reline up back to the left a little bit. Left, 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 left. I believe you can make it. There you go. Pop it, pop it, pop it, pop it. Let me get out of the way over here. Pop it. Oh, doing wheelies. You can just keep, give it some more, give it some more, give it some more. Yeah, 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 you almost had it. Oh, you almost had it. That back right tire is doing stuff. It's heavy in the front. There you go, 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 go. High five. Yes, I told you you could make it. That was your first real, like, get up on there, too. Good going. Learning what you can do, learning what you can do. All right. How are you going to get down this hill here? <laughs> New gladiators are so cool. I like the rims on that. Are they heavy? That's not a bad thing. It's not. Uh, it's good to have some weight in the wheel. Are they aluminum or, or metal? Do you know? Or like a steel? Okay. Yeah, that can be helpful. The nice thing about that is, with just the steel rims, you don't need to add anything else. There you go. <laughs> Takes a little bit of time, but it's worth it. Yeah, yeah, he's looking to see what's going on. I can't, I can't get him in the driver's seat. The, the interior on this one is not a hard, 3D printed one. It's just a Lexon, so. No, no, she's the one she's got. We usually have a seatbelt on and everything, but she can sit in the driver's seat and everything. It's nice. My diff? I think my rear diff is on something. I'm not sure.
What did you do? Did you break it? Oh, it's really stuck. I was driving around and I looked over and I just see you with a stick and you're like. I, dirt just hit me in the head. <laughs> Whoever, who was driving? That was you driving. <laughs> Yeah, right? Oh, I've done a couple there already. I'm going to just step in a little bit. <coughs> oh. All right. This is pretty good. This thing has really amazed me. Um, I'm ready to do some gates. You want to try it? Yeah. All right. All right, guys, I just want to say thanks for watching and just say on some of this shaky cam footage, it is because I'm recording off my controller uh, that I, that you're using to control the RC with. So it's just doing that whole natural thing of like pointing my hand at the car, but also watching the car and then driving it and then trying to look around and talk directly to other people and have conversations and stuff. So I do apologize. This is not the so best best i tried to cut it in a way which where i was showing you guys the obstacles and where the where it got more of my attention um we're gonna have some still cam footage here for you it's pretty fun and we'll have some more coming for you there's gonna be a lot more to come like i said so if you want to sub and see that make sure you do that because we're small and we're gonna talk a little bit more at this in the vi this video here about damages from the truck we're gonna look into what kind of things we took that like we do when we go out to events and stuff i always like to go over we're gonna go over some uh just some there's about a few about five minutes of some stuff that we cover with the truck so if you want to see that it's there for you for any of the other geeks thank you guys for watching again we'll see you next time uh, you're scared yeah. look at that flex on the green truck that is insane now hang on my front end is cracking oh. Good luck in there. If you got it, give it hell. Turn, turn, turn. Come on. You back up any? Yeah. Oh. There you go. Whoa. Whoa, no, 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 no. Back up, back up, back up. Come up on here. Left. There you go. Left. Yep, drop in there. Try to keep your tire on that big rock so you don't take damage. Oh, you're about to take body damage. I am not on there. Yeah, your, your wheel's not on there anymore. Yeah. Try to get your wheel on there. Left side, yep. There you go. That's good. That's good. You have a rock slider on that side. Go. Oh, that's body damage. Oh, you are scratching hard. Oh, that might have scratched the paint. That's okay. <laughs> it's fine, baby. It's just for it's just for fun. You gotta do something. Give it some gas. Give it some heavy gas. Those tires on how wide they are. All right. Whoa. You're gonna have to gas it through there hard. Gas it, gas it, gas it hard. Back up, back up. 
Now gas it hard through there. Nope. Now. Now. Oh. You see the line, you gotta get, like, squeeze between that big rock there. Yeah. You gotta back up though and get a run at it. There you go. I think you just moved to rocks. <laughs> All right. I did want to talk about the Jeep a little bit here too, and some of the damage that it suffered. I want to say right off the bat, this thing performed great. With the rear end, how we did it, these tires are amazing. Uh, I don't know if the bigger tires would be just as good, but them, this size of this tire, just fantastic. Well, this is the 93 millimeter, by the way, uh, RC four wheel drive uh, mudslinger crawl, rock crawler. So just no tire wear at all for one. And I gave this thing to a nine year old kid at some point and let him bash it around and rev it up, which is awesome. Shout out to his dad and him. Um, I believe the name was, uh, oh, that's not important actually. We're on the internet. We don't need to share everybody's names, but um, they had a lot of fun. He, he was, like I said, nine, and I could imagine myself if I ever got to see anything like this, um, I would have been the same way. He followed me around for a while, me and Haley, and watched us play and run some gates and stuff. So it was really cool to do that. And for that reason, some of the damages, I'm not sure what to look for, but we're just gonna go and look at the damages overall. The one thing that I know I did to it, uh, in the video you'll see we had a rollover at one point, and when we rolled over we fell off of two planks which were up pretty high, and we snapped a mirror. Now what's important to note is that we've rolled the green truck at least 30 times and we rolled it down a cement hill and it never broke anything, all it did was get a few scratches. And this rolled one time into a soft dirt and snapped a mirror instantly. One of the reasons why that is, is the green truck have folding mirrors where this has hard plastic mirrors that pop in through the sides here. So this is the mirror before it's broken. They just slide into the hole like so. And it's just held in by tension. Well, when it fell on its side, that's why it snapped. It didn't have anywhere to go. And I was able to find the mirror so I can just glue it back together. And that's what I plan to do. Um, this gray truck, we plan to run the mirrors in. so. Hopefully it doesn't keep happening, but I do have some rubber mirrors, and then we have a uh, another truck that um, we're another Cherokee we're gonna run without the mirrors. So, so just kind of let you guys know. So far, it's a lose on the mirrors. If you want to consider, we only ran it one time, and I am I am the least hard person that plays hard with their trucks. Like I do it hard, but only I go as fast as needed, as, as slow as possible. So, man, these tires, by the way, once I started driving them, they're really soft now. Before they were. They were always sticky, like they're not sticky now because they're covered in dust, but um, they were kind of hard. They were always squishy, but they were kind of hard, just like in general, like the rubber itself was hard. Now it's like even this little part squishes together. And I gotta tell you guys, in the video, watch these tires, watch them mold when they're going through stuff. It's crazy. Really, really awesome to see. Um, all right, back to body damage. Sorry, I'm getting boogled about tires. <laughs> I don't even know if you could see any of that because uh, the camera angle, so. All right, some more body damage. Not seeing too much scratches or anything, which is cool because I did wax it. I don't think uh, we told anyone that at the what's it called, but we I did wax the truck. So technically, it should have had a little bit of damage resistance to what's it called. There is one scratch right here from a rock. And there should be a bunch more right here because there was a lot of times where I was grinding rocks around the side of my doors and I'm not seeing any. Yeah, literally zero scratches there. So that's really cool to know that the Enjura paint holds up pretty well. Um, granted, like I said, I did, I did wax it. Yeah, there's no scratches there. Here's one. Now that's about where I said I was scratching before. So that's, yep. But yeah, that's cool. I like it. Adds to the effect. I'm not too worried about keeping this thing perfect. Just want to keep it looking like a, a pickup, you know, kind of something that you would see on the street. I don't want it to look completely banged. Well, if it gets banged up enough, we'll paint it rusty colors. I, I don't really care. I don't know what I'm saying. Top, fine, we didn't roll it on the top. The bars didn't break, which was nice because they're held in by super glue. Uh, we did find out that if you're rolling the bikes up, uh, let me know what you're doing to hold your bike up because I'm doing realistic straps. Um, I didn't have a problem with the bike falling over, but I did notice that like, 
I felt too scary for if I was gonna roll the bike would definitely take a brunt of the damage which it ended up not doing when I did roll it it was fine but after that's when I flipped it over um, I did mount it before obviously both to the center straps and it was way better so I might just go back to that next time we test run it again with the bike but obviously the bike hurts its performance a ton um, it's pretty heavy probably about a pound maybe half a pound doesn't look like it'd be that heavy but it's it's pretty stout for what what it is and uh yeah and all the other stuff but that's not really about that it's about being having fun anyways but yeah just just uh i would say something like this if you're putting uh the motorcycle in your back from enduro it does just add a all i'm trying to say is a weird thing when you have it standing up because when you use your forward mo momentum or your re any kind of momentum to carry you through a object this bike kind of wants to bounce especially when you're just using straps like i was with your momentum so you almost have to like play a lot of hours with this in the back and get used to what this is going to do to your physics because this is going to add a lot especially when you start sidewalling and stuff which we didn't it didn't make us want to flip any more really than without it that i could notice not not that we've ever ran the truck without it it performed great is all i'm saying but it, I could definitely tell that there was just weird things happening and this is what I contributed it to. Some of the weird stuff was just because having when the bike was standing up, sometimes it wanted to just kinda flop in a weird way. Whereas once I laid the bike down, it was much more consistent on me being able to tell what I was doing. Also, some of that would probably contribute to Owen here, bouncing around on the inside. Um, I still don't have a seat belt for him. And everybody was giving me shit that he wasn't seat belted in. So I guess the community hates it if you have a driver that's not sitting down. I thought I was being crafty having him look out the window, but everybody hated it. <laughs> so maybe next time what I'll do is I'll I'll have him on the back of the bike and he'll be driving from back here. <laughs> and I'll see how much they like that then. <laughs> that will really mess it up. No, uh, alright guys, that's it for the damages. Paint's there. Paints on the bumper and stuff are all chipped off, but we painted the bumper. These are just Traxxas anyways. Um, let's pull up the body there. Body damages seem fine. The rubber's held up. I don't know. When it comes to everyone complaining about these rubber things, yes, these are hard to get on. Pre-drill your holes before you drill before you screw in these screws. Make the holes a little bit bigger if you can. Or not bigger, but like just make sure they're the right size because the screw hole or the screws themselves are really bad. They're gonna strip out. They don't like to go in. If you got different screws you can use with bigger grooves, I would suggest using them. And I would suggest using Loctite for whatever you're using to put these on, unless you want these to come off again. And if you're cut fine without using the mud flares for this body don't use them because they're probably going to end up being ripped off at some point especially if you're using a bigger tire anything bigger than class one i'm just okay so they lasted today they lasted through the nine-year-old plowing through shit they lasted through me plowing through stuff sorry about the language there um I'm trying to get better at that uh but they just might not you know and i did put in different screws i got heavier duty screws that are lock nut tighted in so you can see here um you can see here, this is how I had to mount the battery because I forgot to mount it correctly before we left for the trip. And I forgot to trim this down. So the battery was getting smacked in the rear the whole time. And this is just a Traxxas battery. And it didn't break, it didn't blow up, didn't catch on fire. It's still here. So, like yeah, I like Traxxas batteries. I mean, they're, I mean, yeah. The problem was it's supposed to fit like this with this low mount and then my my body fits too low still. I don't even have enough clearance for the battery to fit right there. So I don't know what I'm supposed to, I'll figure it out. But uh, as far as looking at this, everything looks good in here. Nothing moved, the magnets all stayed. None of the magnets broke off the body from the hot glue. So I will say hot glue for keeping your magnets on. And I will say this, we're using two magnets here and two magnets back here. For the mounting i think this is the first time i've shown anyone how i mounted this body i think this is the first time anyone's seen this body and uh they go here and here and there's two magnets on the top here that go to these two otherwise these ones just go to the metal frame and they're double stacked to, to even it out um the the body never fell off even when oh no the body did fall off right when it fell on its side and the mirror broke uh there was another gentleman that tried or yeah there's another gentleman that tried flipping the truck over and he said the body fell off a little bit but uh, other than that, it didn't. But I'm okay with that because I don't plan on rolling it. That's a class one. Class one is like 
you never should ever put yourself where you're gonna roll it. Once you get to the point of rolling it, you should be winching or backing up or calling for a repo because class one is essentially your real truck that you need to drive to work after you're done trailing today. So if you wreck it off the side of the cliff, you're, you can't go get groceries for your baby that your wife is waiting for you at home with, you know? So again, class one, like we drive the class ones immersively. There's no hate on anyone, but if people see us out there like, why do you guys drive so slow? You kind of feel like we're ruining it for you. I'm sorry. I felt like we were holding some people up today, but I mean, that's class one driving. We like to drive real. We like, I mean, we can't get a real truck. We can't afford it. So these are what we do. And then, uh, but that's damages. Um, let's check out the underneath here. So this tracks, if you guys remember last time we drove this, I was worried about that. Seems like our oil situation held up there. Our shock mounting held up perfectly fine. Got some oily stuff here, but I always spray these down with WD-40, so my guess is it's just still WD-40. Um, if I notice my portal starts starting to leak, I'll let you guys know, but I doubt so. Uh, yeah. I don't know, we're looking good, looking good. A little scratched up, no banged up in the green one. Yep, looks like it's a pretty low driving truck. From what I can tell, just having a low driving truck, my underneath are getting way more banged up. I, I tell you that much for sure. Like, cause your tires, your tires are what gonna give you your most amounts of clearance. So, with these little tires, this is our clearance. With big tires, you can have up to like that much clearance. So if you just get what a big difference that is as far as what clearance or how much you're not gonna take smacks. So the underneath of our trucks are getting banged up more and our bumpers are definitely getting banged up more, but I mean, class one baby. So, all right guys, I hope that was helpful. Thank you.